Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Hummel. It's the Tier 6 German SPG. This one's located on the south spawn of Cliff and it's under the command of Jim Lee of SLPSC. I suppose that's Slipsy. Game on! Well, this is the first replay that Jim Lee has sent us, but he has been watching our channel and he's a fan. He likes the uh, videos. Now he's got the big gun, the top gun, that's a 15 centimeter howitzer capable of doing 600 alpha, 39 millimeters of pen, 6.7 meters on the burst radius, between 9.5 and, and 16 seconds of stun. Okay, it means he can shoot over the entire range of the map, but it's got a rather flat trajectory, and that makes hitting targets fairly difficult when they're actually in a difficult position and he'd find it probably a lot easier to hit that Cromwell B in his current position if he actually had the uh, stock howitzer which is the same as the gorilla howitzer the reason is it's got a much higher trajectory and that means the shells come down on top of the enemy well he fired at the Cromwell B unfortunately hit the cliff edge because the trajectory is so flat that it's very easy for the shell to intercept the rock instead of the target. Say so up on the cliff we can see that he's got an AMD 178B hiding behind the rock doing a bit of spotting and there's another tank just nearby an M4A3 76 Well we just lost an M4 but oh my gun that's a penetrating shot low roll 579 but look at the hole it's on the engine deck that's why he penetrated it. Very thin armor, and it did do uh, a fair bit of damage. Okay. Well, he's waiting for the reload, but he's not looking for his next target. Normally, we advise RT players when they they um, search around for a target whilst they're actually reloading, so that they don't then have to uh, suddenly wait to dial in. Got a Skoda T25, he just killed our Basotto. Rounds out. Well, that hit him hard for 286, so that's a good strike. Yeah, the idea is to basically is to make every use of your time to get lined up on the next target so that when the reload completes, you can immediately fire at the enemy and get another shell into the breach. The more shells you get out, the more chance you've got of getting a confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else in your team. Another strike and a good hit. That was on the roof of the uh, VK. He got 136 from the actual hit, but he got another 192 from the subsequent shot. You can see that M4A3 took the opportunity to occupy the spot where the AMD had previously been. And now we've got an M6, rounds out. Lands in front of him, but he still gets stunned. Now the other thing is, he hasn't moved about since he fired. He's not relocated, but he's not trying to overtly counter-battery the enemy. Uh, that's actually a good thing, because uh, if he, as so long as he doesn't um, get spotted, or if the enemy doesn't try to fire in his general direction, he can maximize his time aiming at the enemy and unfortunately he's, he's leaving a big gap after he fires when he's loaded he's waiting a while before he actually lines up so this should all be something that you do whilst you're um, waiting for the reload to go through okay going for the m6 again rounds out 167 off that one the M6 could be a one-shot now if he gets the round in the right place. And we see that M4A3 poke up, take a look, but then pops back down again. In fact, he could get a shot, but the T78 who's up in the sniper's nest at K5 managed to get the kill shot. Of course, he's got a 19mm gun, so it's possible for him. Now, as far as we know, there's a Cromwell B and the Skoda T25 on the donut. There's the, Sk uh, the, the Cromwell. This is one of the reasons why all top RT players will try to use the stock gun on the um, Hummel 
a few will use the top gun because they like the range but if you've got the stock gun you've got much much better chance of hitting targets that earn dips like that okay we've got a poodle over to the east he's taking the opportunity to move houses our T-78 is still up there, but there's a Type 64 nearby, and I think he just fired a round in. I think that may have been the T-78 actually got that shot. The reason it was almost a 90mm round, it looked like the 278 is a high roll. Round out. And again, he hit the cliff edge, but the Cromwell was close. Yeah, he's manoeuvring behind that tree. Ah, that's an arty round. It wasn't aimed at us. It was actually aimed at our M4A1 FL10. But he's loaded. Rounds out straight away. Oh, and he hit the Cromwell B. He got a direct hit because there's no explosion and the shell disappeared. So, yep, he got a direct hit on that guy. And the enemy poodle just got taken out by our Type 64. So he's changing position now, which is a good idea because that shell that came in at our M4A1 FL10, it might have uh, been a warning that, uh, yes, we're looking in your general direction. Okay, IKV. These got a very, very thin armor, so you can penetrate them. If he can get a penetration on this guy, he can put it out of the game. But he needs to work out where the guy's going. He fires promptly, but... The IKV was able to back away before the shell came in. And it looks like the T-78 has scored another. So that's two kills now for the T-78. This is beginning to be a pattern. Oh, now that's that Cromwell suddenly appeared. And he's missing virtually all of his hit points. So that direct hit must have taken a lot out of him. And you can see the enemy RT is having a go at the Nashorn. And it looked like the shell came from the bushes in A4. That looked to be the general direction. If you ever see the tracer, you can see or where the tracer is coming in from. You can get an idea of where the enemy RT is. Uh, T3485M. Fortunately, when it's very difficult shot from this angle, we've got an occluded rescue which means there's some obstruction just slightly to our left. Probably a rock that's blocking the shot. But we can get a hit from this angle. Rounds out. That's a hit. 224. Now he needs to move a little further to the east. If he can get a bit further to the east, it'll make it easier on him to get the T-3485M and maybe that KV-85 that's sitting behind him. We're one up on the enemy. At one point during this battle, we were two down. But we've recovered a little. He's now got both the concentration skill and the communications expert skill working. So he's getting two and a half percent extra on crew skills for this battle. And that's so important. I did say that when the crew skills came out. I said that one and the the concentration is, well, it's good. But... Um, I definitely thought the communications expert was the one that we definitely needed because it's such a boost to the crew skills and it's so easy for RT to get the assistance because of course all we have to do is stun the enemy and our teammates will do the rest for us. Unfortunately our junior just went down to that M6 rounds out and we've got another 84 but he's a one shot now. He'll go down with the next hit. And he does go down, and it's a VK301P on our team who got the kill. Okay, so who's next? No other enemy in sight. Ah, oh, now we've got that Skoda again. And it looks like he's backing away from one of our guys. Rounds out. Well, it was near on target, so it looked like the shell would have probably taken him out if it landed next to him. He's having a quick look up the other end of the map to see if he can spot the enemy RT. I don't think he's over here. I think he is actually the other side of the cap in the A4 area. 
But one trick you can do to make it easier to see enemy RT is to use the V key and switch off all the uh, indicators. And then the tracer stands out very, very highly, so very strong, makes it easier for you to work out where the enemy tank is, the enemy RT. He's looking for that VK. I'd be very tempted to move to grid square A, or not A, K3 at this moment, and shoot from there, because I think you'll get a better angle on that KB-85. T-34-85 has gone around the hill. Unfortunately, our T-78 has abandoned his spotting position, his uh, sniper position, and he's now in the Western Pass, and we can just see the wall being knocked down as that T-34-85M makes its way forward. Now, we'll probably hear the wall go down next, and see it go down if we're looking in the right place. I think. Oh, the wall's going down to the right. We didn't see it, but I heard it. Definitely to the right. In fact, there is a gap in the wall just a short distance away. Yeah, we can see it right at the edge underneath the uh, the tables. But he's going to take a shot at the T-3485. And the enemy Hummel just took out our T-3485M. And now the enemy T-3485M is in our sniper's nest area. But that's a kill. But not for us. The T-150 took the kill just after our shell went in. And so we picked up 256 on damage and 150 from stun assist. But we do need to get into cover now because that T-3485M will probably see us if we try and shoot again. We've been looking in this general direction. There he is. Okay, opportunity for Jim Lee to get a kill here. He didn't get that one on the other T-34, but it would be nice if he got it on this one. Rounds out. Oh, that is a hit. 309 didn't pen, but it certainly hit. And you can hear the wall being knocked down again. You saw that the, the wall disintegrated and we heard the rubble falling over. Again, it's another of those signs that you can actually use to tell you where the enemy is. <laughs> the T-78 came back from being AWOL and he killed the uh, enemy T-3485M. Yes, don't leave your post in future. Be useful uh, where you can be. Okay, BK. A bit difficult to get the BKs. He's staying around that corner. I repeat, I think he'd be better off moving out to uh, K3 or K4 and shooting at KV85 from there. It's not a very fast starty, only 42 kilometers an hour. They started making them in 1943, and a lot of them actually saw service in Russia, or rather in the Soviet Union. Only four left on the enemy team, and that's the two minute hooter. We really do need to reposition. I'm sure that KV-85 is worried about what's going to come around the wall. If he moves any further back, though, that AMD-178B of ours is going to spot him and start shooting at him. The VK is kind of trapped now because we can, we've can we got proximity on him to a certain extent. There's the KV-85. Okay, we're dialing in as fast as we dare. Well, that's one hit. That's another. He's now one shot. Oh! <laughs> That's definitely a kill, no doubt about that one. And it looks like Jim Lee is now racing to try and get one of the last three enemies. The VK is very vulnerable, he's a one shot. That's the one minute marker. The enemy has got a Hellcat, who I reckon is probably up in the sniper's nest. Yes, he is up there in A5. And I think the enemy Hummel is down below him at the moment. So he's dialing in. Just behind the rock. There he is. Round sound. Oh, it was an armor piercing round. Well, he is getting hit. 
24 seconds left on the clock. This one's going down to the wire. The last remaining enemy is the enemy Hummel, but I reckon he's actually in A4 and he's just staying silent at the moment because he can't see anyone. And the M4A1 FL10 hasn't found him, so he must be in A4. And unfortunately, the game's over. Oh, dear. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the first ace tanker for Jim Lee in the Hummel. Congratulations on breaking your duck. You can see it's the first ace because he's got the scrolls underneath the M, and you only get that the first time. He also got a Bruce medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 12, and he got a Confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. In fact, he only got one kill in the game, the KB-85, and the rest, I'm afraid, they were, well, they all contributed towards the Confederate and towards his ace tanker as well. His win eight on that one, 3,740, which is super income standard. Let's have a look at team score. Didn't get the highest damage in the game. The T-78 was doing incredibly well, although he did leave his post and went to try and go to the center to take out more enemy tanks. And as a result, he left the sniper's nest unoccupied. Uh, and that T-3485M was able to creep up and get close enough to start shooting at our teammates. He managed to get a high caliber and 3,637 hit points. In second place, it was Jim Lee with 2,431. And in third place, it goes to the T-3485M on the enemy team, the one who actually managed to get close, I think, in the sniper's nest area. When it came to kills, we can see that the T-78 did five kills, just one short of getting a top gun. And in second place, that T-3485M who got three, and two kills went to the M4A1 FL10, the VK301P on our team, and the M6 and the Hummel on the enemy team. And I'm pretty sure that Hummel was sitting in the bushes just down below the Hellcat right at the end of the game. And we can see that uh, Jim Lee only got the one kill out of the game. But when it came to base XP, we can see he's in second place because the T78 got 856. Jim Lee got 608, and in third place, it got, just goes to the M4A1 FL10 with 456, just beating the Skoda T25, top scorer on the enemy team with 455. He fired 17 rounds. Well, you don't get a lot of ammunition with the top gun. Only 18 rounds in this game. And again, this is another mistake by Wargaming. They should allot the, the vehicle at least 25 rounds maybe even actually more because the Hummel did actually have a munitions charger, a vehicle that didn't have any gun, but did have, uh, was exactly the same vehicle as the uh, ordinary Hummels, just missed the howitzer. And what they could do is during wartime, they could, uh, if the vehicle uh, that was actually carrying a howitzer got disabled, they could take the, the Hummel, uh, the, um, take the, the, sh the howitzer off the vehicle that was damaged and replace it onto the muni munitions charger and put the shells on another vehicle to uh, carry them about. So it was actually quite a versatile solution, very much like the M12 solution, because of course they had basically the same thing with the T30. He managed to get seven direct hits during that game and one penetration 13 splash. Damage of 2,431 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged nine of the enemy, killed one, did 752 hit points of stun assist off 12 stuns. On a free to play account, he made a profit of 19,410 credits from the game. And he also took away 978 experience points out of it as well. But it's the first ace tanker. And of course, it was a good game. But for the fact, obviously, I think he needs you need to look, see where those traces are coming from. I noticed as well there were some gaps in the time when you were not actually fully dialed in on your next target. So there was a, a slight gap between when you were loaded and before the time you actually fired the shell. I think a lot of players you'll see on this uh, channel, they, they actually hunt around for their next target and are fully ready. So the moment the shell is loaded, the shell's out the breach and into the enemy. You want to fire as many shells as you can. And I reckon you could have got that last shell off um, right at the end of the game. I know it was an armor piercing round, but you probably would have got that last shell out 
uh, before the end of the game uh, at the enemy RT if he'd been spotted. Um, but yes, that tracer did indicate where he was. Um, I saw it as when you were aiming towards the T3485M um, in the Western Pass, because you, you can see the tracer in the background. At least I think that was the moment. It may have been one of the other moments when you were looking uh, in that direction. Anyway, great uh, that he's uh, managed to get his first ace. Congratulations for that. It's also the first replay that Jim Lee has sent in to us. But I don't think it'll be the last because I'm pretty sure he likes this channel. Um, he gets to showcase his work and he is doing well. He's getting ace tankers. And uh, nobody can deny that when you get an ace tanker, you are doing very well indeed. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.